تجربے خدا میں رزوی ہو اللہ المائٹی بائی ہز ڈیوائن گریس اینڈ دا مرسی آف دا بلا رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم has blessed insan with the capacity, with the ability and with the capability to go towards that in which he finds the solution, the solutions to his problems, in which he finds the answers to his difficulties, and wherein he finds the treasure chest from which he may attain his needs in the time of need. <coughs> Allah has given man the akal to do this. Man knows that when he is sick and he has a severe pain in his stomach, then he will not go to a tailor. He will go to the doctor. <coughs> Simple language. If he needs to sew a hat, he will not go to the surgeon, he will go to the tailor. When he needs to, when he has a stomach ache, he will go to the doctor and not to the tailor. And when he needs to sew a topi or a skurta, he will go to the tailor and not to the doctor. Yet the surgeon also sews. Yet the surgeon also sows, but he will not go to the surgeon, he will go to the tailor. And if he needs to stitch up his hand, he will go to the doctor, to the surgeon, not to the tailor. So Allah Ta'ala has given us the akal to be able to differentiate and to understand where we need to go for what we need. Simple. Allah has given us this tawfiq and this akal. That if a person wants to fix his vehicle, He will not go to a farmer. He will go to a mechanic. And if a person wants to grow a meadow, he will not ask a mechanic to grow it for him. He will find somebody that is a good farmer that knows what he is doing. Everything that you do in life, you go to the person that is responsible for that. You do not go to somebody that does not know. Without comparison, if a person wants to learn deen, he will not go to an IT technician, he will go to an alim. He will not go to somebody who has just read a few books in a library, he will go to somebody who understands those books in the library. And if a person wishes to solve his apparent and physical issues, he will go to those whom Allah has appointed for that. And when he wants to sort his spiritual issues, then he'll go to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani al-Baghdadi. He will go to Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Jilani al-Baghdadi radiallahu an. If he wants to sort his spiritual issues, he will go to the feet of Sultan al-Hind. Khaja Khajagan, Khaja Mohinuddin, Chishti and Mary Sanjari radiallahu ta'ala. If he wants to sort his masail and his fatawa, he will go at the feet of Imam Ahle Sunnah ta'ala, Hadrat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala. And why is this that it is being asked? That why do you go to Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani? Why can you not go to somebody else? I need to stitch my heart, not my hand. I need to spiritually stitch my heart and repair my heart, not my hand. If I wanted to repair my hand, I would have come to you. I went there to repair my heart. Because these are the personalities who look beyond the physical. They look beyond the physical and Allah has blessed them with this maqam and this fazilat that while they are on the earth they are unique while they are on the earth 
they are unique. And once they go beneath the zameen, they are still unique. They are still unique. This is the maqam that Allah has given to His chosen servants. So when we go towards the beloveds, we go towards them because Allah has given us Alhamdulillah, the aql to understand where to go. Allah has given us Alhamdulillah, the aql to understand where to go. Because these are those personalities, these are those pious servants of Allah Almighty, they are these beloveds of Allah, that sometimes from your sight you may see something, but in reality something else. In your physical apparent sight you may see something, but in reality it is something else. I'm not telling you about those fake ones. I'm being blunt. I'm not telling you about those who are busy sitting and eating biryani and the time of namaz comes and they don't read namaz and say I'm reading the Kaaba. I'm not talking about that. And when you ask them why are you, why are you not eating here? Why are you not reading here? Say we read inside. We read inside. Why they don't eat inside? Why they don't eat inside? I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about personalities like that personality that when the mother came to him and he said, and she said, I left my son with you and I saw you giving him dry wheat bread to eat. But I've come in your court and I see you eating murah. I'm eating, you, you are eating chicken. And I left my child with you to nourish him and to make him like you. And he is eating dry bread. Then he looked at the bones in front of him and he said, rise by the command of Allah. Rise by the command of Allah. And those bones joined and connected to each other till the real creature came into existence by the will of Allah. And he said to her that your son is eating that until he can do this. Allah. When he does this, then he can eat this. Allah. What is this? That is Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilan in Baghdad. The idea is, is very simple. For certain things you go to certain people. And Allah has appointed them. That is why it has been mentioned that if you, there are narrations, they are rewired that if you are traveling in a jungle somewhere, if you are traveling in an isolated place somewhere, and while traveling, if you lose something, what does it say in the Hadith Mubarakah? Ya ibadallahi a'inuni. When you lose anything, you're traveling, what do you do? You can't find anybody to help you. You lost. Ya ibadallahi a'inuni. Oh, servants of Allah, come to my aid. Nobody there. Nobody is around you. But Ya Ibadullah, Ya Inu, O servants of Allah, come towards us, come for our need. Why? Because Allah has appointed them for you, the unseen servants even. You cannot see them. Allah says, call out to them and your needs will be fulfilled. Call out to them, call out to the servants of Allah. We are being taught. Okay? Now, amongst these personalities, very quickly, time is not permitting to say too much. Is Ghosul Wat Huzure Mufti Azam Hind Radiallah. Whose tarikh paidaish is to the Yom Evilad. This was the day that he was born, 27 of Zul Hijjah. And it is also the evening marks the eve of the Urs of the roving ambassador of Islam, Hadrat Allama Maulana Abdul Alim Siddiqi Mirti Radiallah Ta'ala, who was the Khalifa of Allah Hadrat Alim Al Barkat Radiallah Ta'ala. Now these are those personalities who we go to. People ask, why do you go to them? We go to them because Allah gave us the aqal to understand that this is why they are here. Allah allowed us to understand that this is why they are here. When you want that level of success and that level of madad, then you go to them. When you go to the doctor and the doctor says that I can't do anything for you, what do you do? What do you do? Then you go to them because Shaykh Abdul Qadir says that where the worldly tabib's maqam stops, their mind starts. Their mind starts. When it comes to certain issues, he explains this. Now, people say, but how can somebody else benefit you? How can somebody else benefit you? Simple, by To give you, to take you on a longer journey to bring you there. Let me tell you. That the Sufyan Ikram have mentioned something very beautiful. Say Subhanallah, Shaykh. Subhanallah. 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 Leave alone the person. Leave alone the person. Leave alone a personality. 
let's talk about an entity. You leave alone a person, a personality. Let's talk about an entity. You're talking about benefit from the person and from people and from scholars and mashayikh. Let me tell you about benefit from a thing. What is wealth? What is wealth? It's an entity. It's dolat. It's materialistic. For those who complain that you cannot benefit from them, how do you benefit from this? When somebody gives you 50,000, take it and dump it in the bin. I can't benefit. Why must I take help from this? Let me tell you. Simple understanding. Simple understanding. Allah has put people in this dunya for us for certain reasons. One example that Allah has put for you to understand that what I'm talking about. One example is a fakir. Is a, a fakir who you would call a beggar. But in Islamic terminology, a fakir is one who is insolvent. He doesn't have nishab. It doesn't mean he's a beggar. He cannot pay zakat. He's not the person who is responsible for zakat. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have nisab. And in the spiritual terminology, a fakir is somebody else. Once my, I remember once my, when in my student days, food for thought. Once from the student, my, in my student days, one of my colleagues who was studying with me from India in Bareilly Sharif, when we were filling our application form, every year we had to refill a form. And one of the things you have to get another person to testify in the form to say that this person is Sunni Sayyid Lakida. So at the end of the form, you have to write your name. So with his name, he wrote Fakir and he wrote his name. And it's written as humility. Up to today, we write our name. You write Fakir and you write your name. But he was a student. My Ustaz looked at him and he said, Fakir, do you know? Are you capable? Do you have the capacity to write this word for yourself? Are you worthy of this? He said, Hasad, it's, a, it's a word of humility. He said, you are still a student. Don't let it go to your head. You are still a student. Don't let it go to your head. He said, you want to know fakir? Fair say fiqah. Qaf say qayadat. Yad, yeah say yad ilahi. Re say riyazat. Which one of this is inside you? Which one of this is inside you? So, it is used in different terminologies, but I'm talking on the Shari terminology now. So, a fakir, Allah has put a fakir in this dunya. A person who is in need, a person whom you would go to to give something that you need to give. So Allah has put everybody for some benefit in the dunya, whether you see it or not. And one example I'm giving you because we say we go to the only Allah because of some benefit that we can't get from anybody else. And they are the ones who present us in the greatest and the most exalted court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the fakir, now concerning the fakir, the Sufyan Ikram have said something very beautiful. Okay? They say that a fakir to a wealthy person. Now when we say wealthy, we don't mean he has to be a millionaire. We say a person who is solvent. He has enough that he needs to pay zakat. He has nisab. That is a ghani in the Shania. A fakir is one who doesn't have it. He cannot be a payer. And a ghani is one who is solvent. He is nisab in sab. Okay? So... The scholars have said, and the Sufyan Ikram have said, Subhanallah, they say that a fakir to a ghani, I'm going to translate in a simple term, a mendicant, a person who doesn't have a needy person, to a wealthy person, meaning that person who has, okay, for understanding this. They say, the Sufyan Ikram say, a fakir. And I'm going to use the word fakir and ghani now. A fakir to a ghani is his tabib. A fakir to a ghani is his tabib, is his doctor. And on top of that, what else is? He is his dhobi. And on top of that, what he is? He is his qasid. And on top of that, what he is? He is his nigahba. They say that the fakir to a ghani is number one, what we said? You see how my how much light on my memory is bad. <laughs> eh? A fakir to a ghani, number one, is Tabib. Tabib. Tabib, the doctor. doctor. See, Hafizab's memory is better. Half is it. He is a physician. Secondly, he is a dhobi, they say, to the ghani. Meaning he is a washing man, laundry man in simple terms. Thirdly, he is a Qasid. He is an envoy, a delivery person. 
And fourthly, what we said? Fourthly, he is a nigahbar. He is a protector. And the Sufi Al-Ikram said, let us tell you why the Fakir is a Tabib, a Dhobi, a protector, a guard, a guard, and at the same time he is a Kiamame envoy, one who delivers. Why? They say a Dhobi is, is a Tabib because when a wealthy man becomes ill, the Fakir is the Tabib to the Ghani. Because when a Ghani becomes ill, he goes looking for a fakir to give his sadaqah. He goes looking for a fakir to give sadaqah. And when that fakir picks up his hand, Allah gives shifa to the ghani. When the fakir picks up his hand, Allah gives shifa to the ghani. So the fakir is the tabib of the ghani. In that sense. And he is the dhobi to the ghani. He is the laundry man to the ghani. Because when a fakir, when a ghani gives sadqa to the fakir, when a ghani spends, he gives sadqa on a fakir, then when the fakir sincerely picks up his hand and makes dua, Allah forgives the sins of the ghani and he purifies his wealth. What happens when he gives zakah? The God is a form of sadqa. Allah, so what happens? He became the, dobi, the, the laundry man of the ghani. And then, the scholars say, why is he a Qasid? Why is he an envoy? Why is he a delivery person of the Ghani? Said when somebody, when the parents of the Ghani passes away. When the parents of the Ghani passes away. Or when his relatives and dear ones passes away. Then he goes looking for a fakir to give him something for sadqa for his parents name. Something for his sawab. And when he reaches the fakir and he gives him something. Then when that fakir picks up his hand and makes dua then that reward reaches the marhum, hence he becomes the delivery person in the envoy. Hence he becomes the delivery person and the envoy for him. And the fourth thing that he is the protector and the guardian and the nigahban to him. Why? Because when the person, the, fuck, the ghani gives him his sadqa and gives him that sadqa with sincerity, then that fakir with sincerity picks up his hand and says, Oh Allah, he has given me Protect him, protect his wealth, so he becomes a protector. Now Allah has put a fakir in this dunya for that reason. Then what reason he has put Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani? What reason he has put Khazir Ghalib Nawaz? What reason he has put Mufti Azam? What reason he has put Muhammad Abdul Siddiqui? It is for us to understand that simple Allah has appointed certain personalities in the dunya for a responsibility. If you go to them with sincerity, then you will benefit from them. If you go to the fakir and give him a million rand, but you give gave it to show him that I have the money. Or you gave it to look down on him, then he will not benefit you. It will be of no benefit to you. It will be just money spent. Likewise, some people say, how come if we ask, we don't get? Because that is the difference. We asking from here, you asking from here. We asking from here, from the heart. You asking from your tongue. Stop asking from the tongue. Ask from your heart and you will see how the mercy of Allah will be Understand, it is something for us to understand that Allah has appointed those in the world for doing something. Everybody is here for a reason. But if you can't understand who is here for what reason, then it is not the weakness of the one who is there. It is the weakness of the one who needs to go to him. We must understand this. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand. And may Allah ta'ala bless us. Uh, I was going to discuss a few more issues on the same discussion, but time is not permitting, inshallah, in future. Uh, we will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with understanding Amen. the importance of going to the pious servants of Allah Amen. and being humble in the court of the scholars, the true scholars of deen Amen. and in the court of the awliya and the mashayikh so that we can take the real benefit. Amen. We can taste the fruits. We can benefit from them. And the beautiful example is the example of the fakir that the, the, the great sufi have given us. May Allah keep us on iman. Let us leave this world with iman. Those who are in the